Coming up on the sports desk, we've got an epic baseball rivalry. South Bay cheerleaders go national. Badminton isn't just for the Olympics. And two West High basketball coaches join me right here in studio. One, the strength and conditioning coach, wrote a book. The other, the head coach, is featured in it. We've got the who, what, where, when, and how. Let's get things started right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Sports Desk, your one source for all things tour and sports. I am your host, Leslie Robbins. For the next half hour or so, sit back and kick back as we give you a gateway to the brightest sports stars and hottest sports spots in Torrance. Before we get to the good stuff, we want to hear from you. Here are the social media stats. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. Find us, tag us, follow me. Our program is also on Facebook. We've got email. All the details are right there on the screen. Tell us what's going on and what we need to know because when it comes down to it, this show is all about you. Now let's get you in the know with some numbers. Who doesn't love a rivalry? We certainly do, and we have one between Pioneer League baseball teams North and West. During their recent game, North got the win 2-1. to one. Let's take you back. It started off cool and casual. The most dramatic thing that happened early on was North loaded the bases in the second, but it was still scoreless at the end of two. Top of fourth, West gets on the board 1-0. North answers in the bottom of the fourth, one all. Fast forward to sophomore Joey McCormack's last at bat in the bottom of the seventh. Bases loaded with the winning run on third base. McCormack tapped a grounder toward the right that was fielded by West pitcher Ryan Strong, but his throw home was a bit wide, allowing Mitchell Masico to slide home with the winning run for the 2-1 Pioneer League win for the Saxons. Alex, our star, he pitched really well today. And then I came in, I struggled, but I got us out of it. And then Kyle Ty closed it in the seventh. And then we had our guy Joey over here, walked it off. We just had a good battle today. Playing another Torrance team, I know a lot of people on the other team. So it's kind of fun playing against all friends and family. And yeah, it's just a lot more better competition against Torrance schools. Today I know it's going to be a big game coming in. We have Wes this week. And we just had to come out playing hard. So before the game, I usually listen to my favorite music, a uh, little baby or Ghana usually, and be a young boy. Uh, today, it was a good test because it was against West. And we knew that they were one of our toughest competitors throughout the league. And we just came out here, handled business, and then got out. Uh, West is our rivals, so we knew we had to take care of them in order to go to CIF. I was grateful for my teammates getting on base and putting me in the right position to make that last Walk off. Before the game, I usually just listen to music. And I have class, of course. Um, Got to get them grades straight, you, know, you feel me? Ah, uh, yes, we hear you, Joey. Well, you know North probably wanted revenge on their rivals. So when they met again a few days later, West got the W 10-3. to West is now 13-5 and overall, 4-3 and in league, while North is 13-6 and overall and 4-3 and in league. Bishop Montgomery's baseball team only needed one run to win their recent game. One is all you need. Bishop got a 1-0 shutout victory over Salesian. Take a look. A first inning run on an RBI to first by freshman number 23, Kyle Sujimoto. Scoring junior number 16, Elijah Tolzma, held all the way to the end for the night. Bishop, who also had just three hits, scored the only run in the game after Tolzma doubled, took third on an error, and scored on Sujimoto's single. Pitchers Sean Delaney and Langston Matoyer plus Tolzma combined for the win in the Knights Camino Real League. Uh, we came out uh, aggressive and ready to play. Um, you know, we, we uh, jumped on them right away with our leadoff hitter. Uh, came out and put a good swing on the ball. Um, it should have been a double, but um, he took a good turn at second base. And uh, the ball was kicked around a little bit, so he, he made it to third base and put us in a good position to score. And we cashed in on that run. There's a lot of things we need to work on. We struck out too many times today. Um, 
you know, we, we didn't play uh, great defense at the end uh, situationally. Um, but we did enough today to, to win. So, uh, you know, you got to feel good about that. Uh, baseball is a lot of uh, repetition. So uh, we come out, we work on our defensive stuff. Uh, one of the plays which got us a big out at the end of the game, uh, a bunt play. Um, and, uh, and then our approach at the plate, um, making sure that we're locked in. We, we have the scouting report and we're paying attention to it. And our kids uh, are applying that in their bats. Well, you know, we have a really good group of kids. Um, this year's kind of been up and down, but um, you know, they're, they've, uh, they've been steady and, and have really played hard and put forth a good effort um, you know, throughout the entire season. And uh, you know, working with a good group of kids obviously makes my job more fun, and, and so it has been fun uh, this year. And, and, and uh, we're enjoying the season and looking forward to finishing it off on, on, a, on a solid note. Well, I knew I was going to pitch, so I was mentally preparing the entire day. And then I just came out and pumped. Uh, I came out try, just trying to throw strikes, and that's what happened. My defense backed me up, and we got a dub. I was really excited for uh, striking out a bunch of people. I didn't walk the first batter, so I got really hyped when I came back in the dugout. Uh, no, I came out, did good. My defense helped me. Going forward, personally, I think I need to work on my off-speed pitches. My fastball has been doing okay, but my curveball and changeup haven't been that good. We got a couple more games left. I'm, hopefully, we'll get some more wins and make playoffs. Uh, today, we didn't play our best game, but we did enough to get a win. Um, defense was able to lock it down. Um, you know, offensively, we were a little shaky, but we were able to stretch one across early in the first, um, and then just kind of hold them there from the defensive standpoint and get get a win. All of our pitchers, we just really try to attack hitters. Um, we don't care about really throwing it past them. Um, but just trying to make them hit into outs. Um, we we're fortunate enough to get some past them today. Uh, but yeah, just attacking the strike zone uh, is really our game plan as a whole. Personally, uh, I just I need to work on uh, staying more disciplined at, uh, at the plate, uh, not chasing too many pitches outside the strike zone. Um, and as a team, we need to, in a way, do the opposite. We need to be more aggressive at the plate, swinging at pitches, because we struck out looking a few too many times today. We've got to keep working this season. Hopefully we can go out and get into playoffs and get a CIF ring. At practice, we just work hard. Uh, we do batting practice, really focused, defensive reps, um, and then pregame. You know, sometimes we'll all listen to music together, and um, or people listen to their own music. Rap till I collapse by Eminem. Well, when the teams met again a few days later, Bishop wasn't as lucky, losing to Salesian four to one. That left the Knights eight and ten overall, three and seven in league. Bishop Montgomery does have a solid athletic program and holding fundraisers, super fun and 21 and over fundraisers, helps make sports programs like theirs possible. We're having uh, our, our night fest, a couple of bands playing, um, our, our BMHS jazz band, our student band's gonna play. And some of the renovations and building projects that we wanna do um, are gonna be athletic facilities. So, you know, our student athletes and our coaches and, and all the students uh, our alumni, the teachers, the whole community is going to benefit from that. So that's actually probably going to be one of the first things that we do is, is touch on the uh, athletic facilities. Okay, coming up on the sports desk, Wes girls basketball head coach Riki Mirakami, along with the team's strength and conditioning coach Leslie Trujillo, join me in studio. One wrote a book, the other is featured in it. Stay tuned. Sport is a common denominator in the world. And if there's any place where there's equality, it's really in sports. RISE stands for the Ross Initiative in Sports for Equality. We're dedicated to promoting understanding, respect, and equality in sports and beyond. With the country struggling with race, we believe it's time for the sports industry to come together and really unite the nation. We want people to speak up take the pledge, and we'll rise up against racism. And we'll rise up. I pledge. I pledge. To treat everyone with respect. Respect. And dignity. I will not tolerate discrimination or harassment of any kind. I will speak up. Speak up whenever I know discrimination is happening. And I will stand up. Get up. Rise up. For victims. Take the pledge at risetowin.org. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. I'm Leslie Robbins. What a pleasure 
It is to have here in studio with me West High's girls basketball head coach, Riki Murakami, and their strength and conditioning coach, Leslie Trujillo, who wrote a book. Coach Riki, plus some of our favorite student athletes, are featured on those very pages. It's called Dear Her, all about inspiring young women student athletes and helping them find the tools and techniques within themselves to get through life and honestly, I think, to get through the day. Now, before I give away too much, let me talk about how the two of you met, how do you know each other? Let's start there. All right, well, actually, we were just talking about this. It's about 10 years since um, I met Coach C, um, and actually it was through a mutual friend, um, Jamie Hagia, who played here in South Torrance, and, and she played at USC, where it is our co common thread, I guess, and then she trained us at Redondo Union High School, and then from then on, she kind of just been part of my journey, so when I got the job at West, I was like, oh, I got to bring her back, because she's just helped me so much throughout my life. Yeah, she called me up on the first day she got the job. She's like, guess what? I got the job. I'm like, yeah. She's like, I want you to come on. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so now part of your job, strength and conditioning student athletes. But it's not just the physical aspect that you're tackling. Break that down for me. Yeah, so um, as a strength conditioning coach, you have to prepare them mentally and physically for the job. Um, it's called that, but I call myself a performance coach because I get into all areas. I want them to be able to believe in themselves, to have confidence, to be able to handle threatening situations, to go out of their comfort zone, to um, grow themselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. So we push ourselves in terms of physical strength in the weight room, or if we do a beach workout, or <laughs> if we, um, where, wherever we can be, wherever I'm pushing them, but they have to actually learn how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and having the mindset to approach failure and success equally. Yeah, I actually say that all the time that I think failing is just as important, if not more important than winning. You tackle a bit of that in your book. Isn't that important, you think, failing, really? Oh yeah, I, it's, it's necessary. If you always stay with where you're at, that's where you're comfortable but you'll never grow. So you have to go outside of your comfort zone, but in order to get there, you're going to fail. You're going to struggle, because that's where you figure it out, and then that's where you grow. Um, so we definitely need to push the level of failing and have a relationship with it with like, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. You fail, learn, grow. Fail, learn, grow, repeat. <laughs> right, and as you repeat it, it's experiencing life. And, and with all of this, I think you have to experience life, and. In your book, it's called Dear Her for a reason, Dear Her. You're having student athletes write letters to their younger selves, kind of saying, it's gonna be all good. Mm -hmm. Explain that to me. Um, yeah, so I wrote the book with um, Kimberly Jones. She's a strength coach at El Camino, and my sister, Deanna um, Cordova. And what we did is we talked about our own experience as athletes. We talked with other coaches about their experience as athletes. And we said, you know what, we want younger girls to know that they're not alone in everything that they're going through, that there's tools, that they're going to be okay. Um, so we asked 45 women to write letters to their younger selves or to another female athlete about the journey, about what they would learn. Um, because we do, we, in sports we give them playbooks. These are the plays you need to know. In education you give them syllabi, like this is what you have to know. But a lot of times we don't give them tools on which to handle life. And so we wanted to be able to provide our own experience um, to give them strength and to let them know that they're going to be okay as they're going through the struggles. Because the struggle is necessary. It's necessary, but how do you make it through? And you have a letter in this book. Tell me your process of pen to paper. How did you come up with your letter, which is beautiful, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, Coach C approached us la or two years ago. This is Coach C. Oh, yes. The yeah. C is your maiden name, by yes. the way. Yeah. Part of us is my maiden yeah. name. I yes. couldn't, um, she was Coach C before when I was at Redondo, so I couldn't change it once she got <laughs> her, ma her, her ma uh, married name. So um, we just got to stick with it, kind of like Coach K. Um, but she approached us um, during season um, two years ago about writing a letter to my former self, and it kind of, I touched upon it in my letter in the book. Um, it kind of reminded me of that Dear Kobe letter that came out when he retired and, and I think we all kind of go through that where we wish sometimes we knew certain things about life um, when we experienced them back then when we were younger so um, when I wrote this letter it was during our championship season and it was just something about the same thing that the kind of the book touches upon which is I'm such a competitor I'm such a kind of a sore loser in a lot of ways that I always lose sight of the process and the growth um, and I think I touched upon my letter that um, it all becomes about 
failing is a part of life and failing I, I honestly teaches you more than success does because I think you'll learn how to how to approach it differently next time how to um, get better and I think at the end of the day that's what life is about is just getting better every single day so how did you kind of use these tools and techniques last season 10 and 0 league in league I mean you did amazing <laughs> playoffs happen right how did you handle <laughs> it how'd you handle it what'd you do and were you able to pass that on to your girls yeah I think um a lot of you know, if you ask my players you'll find that I'm definitely not somebody easy to please so I always try and give them that motivation that no matter how well we're doing there's always more to be done and I think going into our 10 and 0 league season um, I was super proud of them and I think with seven freshmen and sophomores that you know that you couldn't ask for anything better um, but definitely going into playoffs where we kind of got a little um, stunted a little bit um, so I think now going forward relaying that message is it, season wasn't a failure um, we failed in a certain aspect like we didn't go far as far as we wanted to but I think going forward we could just always use that as what can we do differently next year and how do we move forward um, into our growth yeah pain yeah. is a big motivator <laughs> sometimes so you, we're gonna use that pain with every workout to go forward absolutely now what have you found with the girls that wrote the letters did they say it was cathartic did they say oh, wow, I, sh I should have done that then, but now I know for next time. I think the cathartic was a huge um, theme that from women that I've talked to that wrote the letters, it was like, it was very healing and very helpful to get an objective insight to what they were going through and that how to make it through and then also to pass it on. And Haley, which mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. at Air Force now, um, she was able to come and write a letter about the day before the CIF championship. What, I mean, it's a powerful letter. Yeah. When I read it, I cried. Mm -hmm. And every time I read it to people, I cry. Because it shows that of all the sacrifice she did and her mom driving her to practices and games, and it shows the whole journey. And she said, yeah, she's a little scared. She's a little scared, but she's going to show up anyway. And she's going to show up for the little girl that fell in love with, see, I'm going to cry right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> that fell in love with the sport of basketball. And so I think a lot of them tap into the love of sports, but then see how strong they were and how they made it through the trials and the tribulations when coaches yelling at you, <laughs> when you lose a championship game, when you win a championship game, like through it all, they know that they can take that to every other area of their life. Yeah. And she's, you know, she's struggling. The Air Force is tough. But she said, you know, it was, I was prepared. I was prepared. And it's not easy, but I know I can make it through. And I think that allows them to remind them of their wisdom that they have and the strength they have. Now, this is making you emotional, yeah. of course. It, the book is emotional. It's nonfiction. There's, there's no made-up stories in this book. Yeah. So as an author, as a human being, as a coach, what have you taken away from the letters, from the process of writing the book? Man, it's <laughs> so powerful. Um, one is just to see the power of women when they come together, that's another reason we wanted to write it is because a lot of times in our field, we're in competition with one another. Like, I'm from the strength conditioning field where you have one token female at the university. And the, once the female position is up, then that's it. So it was like, we were always against one another. So to actually show that we can come together and there's actually power in coming together, that was a huge one. Um, being a role model, like all these girls, like when I get my thank you cards at the end of the year, like it's like, thank you, you're such a strong role model. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they got, I, I was just like them, but actually they were more mature than I was when I was in high school. So like, I, I had trouble. I had trouble with being an athlete and figuring out I had a negative coach. I write about it in the book. I had a coach that I laughed at my dream. And that inspired me to not be that coach to other people. I was like, I will never laugh at anybody else's dream. And I want to be the ones that if they have a dream, if they have a goal, that I can help them get there. So like this, I had this vision for this letter, I believe, or this book, since like I was a high school athlete myself. And even though probably one of the worst things that ever happened to me in terms of a very negative emotional coach was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because it started this movement. And I had this vision for this book like 10 years ago, um, but I forgot about it. I got busy with training teams. I, I trained four local high school teams, you know, um, getting married, having kids. I have two kids, a 13-year-old and a 6-year-old. And I forgot about my own dream as I was doing life. But I 
believe that as we continue to take care of ourselves and do what we need to do, if you have a dream and if you have a vision, it'll come back to you. And so just being there to help other people, um, this vision came back to my life and I was able to talk with my friends about it and bring it to, to, to life. So the book has just been beautiful in terms of the encouragement and the support of the community. Like tons of people need it and support. We have 59 reviews on Amazon right now. Yeah. Um, and pe it's a time that people need encouragement and they need women coming together. Men need it. Coaches need it. You know, our, our world needs it. And so it's, it's just been really powerful and I'm very grateful for everyone. <laughs> well, you mentioned Amazon. That's where you can get the book. We have a few copies here in studio. I would like to keep them here and get our viewers some copies. I'm going to tell them all how to do that later in the show. But can we keep them and give yes, them to absolutely. our viewers? Yeah. Yes, I think they're great gifts for coaches, teachers, parents, dads, moms. Like I, my husband's reading it. My son's 13. But he's going to read it. Like everyone can read it. Well, I'm going to save a bunch of copies for our, our viewers. Great. Thank awesome. you. Okay, ladies, what a pleasure having you here in studio. Thank you so much for stopping by. Okay, coming up, local cheerleaders prepare for the national stage, and we break down badminton with the ladies at ECC. Stay tuned. Touch it down! Oh. Did you see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, 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 I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Leslie Robbins here. Step foot into South Bay Cheer 360, and there is no way you don't smile. It's a very cheery place, and these days they have good reason. This group has big things on the horizon, national things, and the Sports Desk crashed a practice to hear all about it. Jay Suns and Blue Crew are practicing. Um, Jay Suns preparing and Blue Crew are both preparing to go to Florida for a um, national championship uh, at the ESPN Center. And Jay Suns has got received a paid bid. Um, so they're actually going to be paid to travel um, to Florida. The celebration when we told them that they had received the paid bid was unbelievable and it, it reminds us why we do what we do. Uh, they, it was really rewarding to watch them celebrate their all their accomplishments that they've worked so hard for this season. The championship they all try to be invited to throughout the season. This is what they're all working for. Um, so it's a huge accomplishment for our gym. This, this year is the first year we're going. To have uh, all three eligible teams qualify for this championship is a huge deal for us. Um, well, it's a big opportunity for us to go to Summit and I like when we warm up and like practice our stunts because we motivate each other a lot. Getting to Summit has always been our goal, so for us to be going our very first time and to have them going on a paid bid is like, is everything. The program is an elite um, all-star program, but we also offer full season prep. Uh, have season novice and mini cheer. They definitely freaked out, they, them and the parents. I think the paid bid means more to them than anyone else because uh, all of their fees like registration and transportation and their Disney park hoppers and all of the major costs are covered now by the event because the kids got a paid bid. So the kids were happy, but I think the parents were like over the moon. What we've been doing for the last few months is just cleaning up the routine, making sure tumbling technique is on point, making sure stunt technique is high and ready to just give everyone in Orlando a show and show them what South Bay is all about. Um, we're just looking to make sure skills are consistent. Consistency is key. And so we just wanna make sure our kids are always focused and prepared every practice up until now, you know, we always hit two full outs before they go. Um, and that's a requirement for them to get out the door to go home, you know. You have to be able to have your skills and be able to maintain and keep up your skills 
all throughout the season. So that way they grow, they get better as a team, as a family. Our kids this season on that team are so close and they're so bonded that I think that's what's gained them the success to earn a pay bid. Definitely an accomplishment to like think that you and your teammates have gone so far this season and just you know, winning each medal and award, it's just pretty amazing. Competing with my friends is so much fun. Like, right when we get on the stage is when the adrenaline's really kicking in. You get to see the whole entire crowd just cheering you on. And definitely, like, when you're performing, it's like just going through all the hard work that you're thinking about, like, from the past and the season. And going to ESPN is just so much fun, hanging out with all my friends. And definitely like a vacation for all the um, hard work paid off. From those youngsters to the students at El Camino College, badminton is what's up. This sport that's enjoyed by professionals and amateurs alike will be at the Summer Olympics in Tokyo next year. So to get you ready early, the Sports Desk has your badminton 101. To be a top badminton player, and, and these girls are collegiate badminton players, but to be a top badminton player or a collegiate badminton player, you need very, hand, very good hand-eye coordination, very quick reactions, and speed of foot. And, and it's a cross between tennis and volleyball, I would say. Um, you have a badminton racket, so you need a racket, and then you hit what's called a shuttlecock. It's got a cork base that the feathers go into. You play the best of three sets as you do in tennis, but in badminton it's the 21 points and it's rally scoring. They changed the scoring system several years ago. So every time there's a service, there's a point. So the games are a lot quicker. They're played a lot faster now. As I said, they're all freshman players. So it's good to see the improvement this year and hopefully they will all return next year. So as sophomores, we should have a stronger team. I came to practice and I really liked it. I have a history of playing like volleyball which it kind of sounds weird, but the way that you move the racket is kind of the same way that you would like hit a volleyball and all that stuff. And you have to be very vocal in the sport. So that's kind of how I feel like I've adjusted to it is because of my previous experience with other sports. We train Monday through Thursday. We have two hour practices and you can tell that John has a lot of experience doing this because he he works on fundament fundamentals a lot. He has us, you know, doing clears and smashes, and it's all very fundamental things. So I played Compton, and it was 21-14 and then 21-18. So we play best two out of three, um, and you switch courts halfway between. So I won the first one, and then I won the second one. So but there's still so much to learn. But everybody on this team is so nice. Everybody's really supportive, and they love to teach each other and support each other. It's great. I love it. Okay, Angela and Christina play Kimberly and Laura. Good stuff. Now, I want to leave you with more rock stars. South's softball team recently hosted rival North. The Spartans are ranked number one in the Daily Breeze, mind you. And they're in that top spot for a reason. The Spartans handed North a 17-0 Pioneer League loss. South scored five runs in the first and third innings, putting up double digits for the third time this season. They are now 14-5 overall, 5-0 in league play. North, who is 12 and 11 overall, two and three in league, were coming off a stellar game of their own when they played South, having beat Inglewood 28 to zero. West won their recent game by forfeit against Morningside, seven nothing. They are 12 and eight overall, four and one in league. As for Torrance High, who are 14 and six overall, three and one in league, Ryan Orange hit two home runs, including a grand slam, and drove in five runs in a 10 to two win to complete the season sweep of North. Orange threw a complete game, striking out eight. Like I said, rock stars. And that is going to do it for today's show. Really looking forward to seeing you back here next week. In the meantime, be sure to stay in touch on social media, Twitter, Instagram. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. Tag us, find us on Facebook, send us an email. Keep in touch and take us behind your scenes. For everyone here at the Sports Desk, I'm Leslie Robbins. Thanks for watching.